Hello guys, Oscar Hotel 8, Sierra Tango, November here from Survival Tech Nord. Today we're talking about Winterfield Day 2018. Now I'm going to go ahead and apologize straight away because I've been sick. So this video is not going to be up to my normal standards. In fact, this influenza or flu or whatever it is I have, I rarely get sick. It's been so bad that I decided to go ahead and do winter field day on my own property out behind the house. Now, before you scold me for this, I can assure you, winter field day in my backyard is exponentially worse than some of the t-shirt and flip-flop videos I've seen coming out so far. Anyway, stick with me a while and I'll go through the whole winter field day with you. All right, let's get started. You are listening to the emergency broadcast systems. This station broadcasts emergency news and official information on the air for a sign area. This winter field day was a little different than previous winter field days for me. And that's because my primary goal for this winter field day was to get my signal into North America. A lot of planning went into that, so that's where we're going to start. For the weeks leading up to Winter Field Day, I used FT8 to understand the right bands and the right time of day to get my signal into North America. I began to understand the best bands for getting into North America were 30, 20, and 17 meters between 15 and 20 UTC. 20 meters was also okay during those times, but it was generally too crowded for a QRP signal to make its way from Europe to North America. Sometimes we get some unexpected benefits when doing the preparation work, and I found out that it's actually quite simple for me to get into South Korea and Japan, although it's further away than North America. But that's something we'll cover in another video. Remembering my primary goal is getting my signal into North America. The stations you see on the map in North America were consistently there throughout my testing. In the end, the testing showed me if there was any chance for making QSOs with those stations in North America it would have to happen between 15 and 18 UTC. So now I understood the best time to reach North America and for North America to reach me. So the next piece of the puzzle was understanding a good antenna configuration, as well as what direction the antenna should be pointed in. One of the lessons of Winterfield Day was normal maps are lying to you. And if that wasn't enough, the magnetic inclination at high latitudes, for example here at 65 degrees north, is quite extreme. So a special shout out to Bonnie, Kilo, Quebec 6, X-Ray Alpha, and John, November 0, Joliet, Delta, Sierra, for helping me sort through those two problems. So with all the testing done and gear ready, John, November 0, Joliet, Delta, Sierra, and myself, decided we would try station-to-station -station contacts between Finland and the heartland of the United States. That didn't quite work out as we planned, but let's come back to that later. If you're operating Winterfield Day in a winter climate, the two most important things you'll want to cover before anything else are heat and shelter. When we're talking about extended field communications in a winter environment, the only two things keeping you and your gear up and running are heat and shelter. So I take the time to put up my shelter and get my stove going before I ever touch my radio gear. Once I've got the wood stove up and running and the teepee is getting hot, at that point I go out and I set up my antennas. This way if I get my hands cold or I have some sort of mishap, I can always come back into the teepee to warm up. Once I had my shelter set up and my heat going, I turned my attention to setting up the spider beam 12 meter telescopic mast with the chameleon antenna CHA Tango Delta. I put the Chameleon CHATD in a lazy L configuration sloping towards 330 degrees to the northwest. Hopefully that's going to put me right smack in the middle of the United States where John is waiting for me on his end. 
so we have the stove set up the shelter set up we have the antenna set up so now it's time to go ahead and set up our radio gear although i was operating in the backyard i wanted to keep that man portable concept real so i loaded up all of my comms gear into this lightweight pack so powering my field station for winter field day is a pack you've seen before. This is the headway based 10 amp hour lithium iron phosphate pack. Next up is a netbook you've seen on the channel before. It's loaded up with PCALE, WinLink, WSJTX, FLDigi, and FSQ. Now to distribute the power that comes out of my lithium iron phosphate battery pack, I use a power pole distribution block from k 9 jolly at echobravocom Incoming video on that one. Today I'm using the Yezu FT817ND. I'm using the ZLP Mini Pro SE audio interface and the 817 is protected by the Chameleon 817 brackets. Finishing up with the radio gear, I've got the LDG Z817 tuner if needed, and I also have a 10 watt amplifier from QRPVER.com. Now you can see the entire station as I used it for winter field day. Now, although the station is quite compact, I was actually wondering to myself during winter field day if a go box type solution would be a better alternative to having all of these free floating items. I could really use some other opinions about a go box in the 817, so if you have some advice, please leave it in the comments. My first contact for the day was Oscar November 6, November Lima. That was on 20 meters SSB. I had other SSB contacts with stations in Europe, but I made a silly mistake. Having deployed only the single antenna which was beaming North America, it was very difficult for me to make contacts with stations in Europe. In hindsight, I would have deployed a second antenna for regional communications and used the primary antenna for reaching North America. Well, for now it is what it is and we can't do anything about it, but for the next deployment I seriously need to consider a second antenna. In addition to using phone for regional communications, I also used WinLink to keep in touch with John and other operators in North America. In this scenario, WinLink acted as a bridge between operators who didn't have propagation between one another. Continuing on with digital modes, I also used FT8 to make contacts with operators in Europe, Scandinavia, uh, and Iceland. Now, FT8 wasn't a recognized mode for winter field day, and that's fine. I used FT8 for testing propagation and my signal reach. But don't worry, I won't be submitting any logs with FT8 contacts to the winter field day organization. Finally, that brings me to my buddy John, November 0, Joliet, Delta, Sierra. So we didn't actually achieve that contact between Finland and North America, but not for a lack of trying. We're definitely going to attempt this again in a few weeks. John mentioned he's going to put out his after action report in the Portable Digital and QRP group on Facebook, so don't forget to check that out. Now let's take a moment to go over the lessons learned during Winterfield Day 2018. Number one on my list is dual antennas for both regional comms and DX. Number two on my list is placing more emphasis on the winter field communications aspect of winter field day rather than focusing on the points in a contest. Number three is something I'm kind of struggling with and that's the idea of building a lightweight form-fitting go box for my radio equipment. You see, I believe one of the ways to reduce operator fatigue and limit station problems is by having everything already integrated into a go box. We're definitely going to come back to this topic on the channel. 
Number four is more of an observation, and that is for low power stations, work bands offer better opportunities for QRP skids or coordinated contacts. Number five on my list was an observation, and that was modes like FSQ or HF, APRS, other utility modes would have been magnificent to use connecting these portable field stations to one another. Finally, the sixth and last thing on my list is an observation, and that is the all-weather solar-powered field station is actually working. So it'll be time to plan some multi-day excursions with the field station soon. Now, a couple of announcements before I close down this video. YouTube is a great platform, but it's increasingly more difficult for small content creators to build a following on their channels. So here are three channels who I'd like to help push over a thousand subscribers. So the first channel is Victor Alpha 3 Oscar Sierra Oscar, that's Carson. The second channel is Stuart Kilo Bravo 1 Hotel Quebec Sierra. And the third channel is Paul Victor Echo 3 Echo Foxtrot Quebec. All I'm asking you to do is subscribe to their channels and share their channels with other ham radio operators. If you don't like them, you can unsubscribe later, but I'm sure that you will. And I promise this is the last time you'll have to hear about this, but the GoFundMe campaign was successful and all of you who contributed in whatever way you could, you're absolutely magnificent. Thank you. The FT891 is on the way and I'll do an unboxing video and breakdown of it as soon as it arrives. To be honest and just keeping it real for a second, I don't know why you all are so good to me, but I appreciate it. The one thing we can absolutely be certain of is we will keep pushing forward together on this channel. Let's leave it there. Rock and roll, guys. 73. Ciao.